What happens in your brain when it gets injured? We've all seen headlines about the dangers of concussion, particularly among athletes, but what's going on with the actual cells in your brain? More importantly, how can we predict the kind of trauma that an injured brain is going to experience? How can we protect it from that trauma? And how can we help it heal? To address these questions, my lab creates three-dimensional spheres made of brain cells. These mini-brains have all the neurons and support cells you would see in the brain, astrocytes, microglia, even endothelial cells, the ones that make up your blood vessels. But each sphere is the size of a grain of sand. That means that in a three-dimensional Petri dish the size of my thumbnail, I can fit almost a hundred mini-brains. Now, I keep stressing that these are three-dimensional. This is important because it allows the cells to more closely mimic the natural environment of your brain. They take on the shape, the density, the tissue stiffness that you would find inside the body. However, because they are outside of the body, we control their environment. We control how many cells are in each microtissue, we control what types of cells are in there, and we control the conditions they're exposed to throughout their development. My lab likes to joke that bioengineers are control freaks, but apparently so are neuroscientists. So while my lab mates are asking if the cells are alive and if they look like healthy cells, I'm asking whether they are communicating like healthy cells. I watch as they form networks and communicate with each other, and I ask what happens when we perturb that network by subjecting the tissues to something like traumatic injury. I do this with a technique called calcium imaging. Basically, I add in a special chemical so that whenever a neuron is active enough to bring in extra calcium ions, it lights up. I take short videos of the microtissues, like on the right, and I use a series of computer programs to ask which neurons are lighting up and when. Looking at several dozen neurons at once gives me an idea of what the network as a whole is doing. Spoilers. Under normal conditions, the neurons form networks in pretty much the same way. They make connections, they show some synchronized activity, and then as they develop, that activity becomes more complex. And this is especially compelling because it's actually pretty similar to the way activity develops in a healthy brain. What we're starting to look at now is what happens when we subject these microtissues to conditions such as traumatic injury. I've put the mini-brain, the little yellow ball over there, into this device, which looks really complicated but is essentially a super precise, super controlled, scientific hammer. So, we impact the mini-brains, and then we ask how the cells look how they're communicating. In the future, we will also be able to test different therapies to help the cells survive and even thrive after this impact. The ultimate goal of this work, the ultimate goal of all of my work, is to advance the field of predictive neuroscience. And what I mean by that is that since we can make so many of these mini-brains, we can test lots and lots of potential therapies, and they will give us a good idea of what's going to work clinically. And while I've been focusing this talk on my work with traumatic brain injury, our lab also has models for things like stroke, where we deprive the microtissues of oxygen for a time, or toxicity, where we can expose them to a chemical and ask if that affects the way that they communicate. And the absolute craziest part about all this is that we get all this information from a ball of cells the size of a grain of sand. Thank you.